Pilots for Truth published an article based on the government story and data for American 77 final leg with calculations that showed if American 77 were on the south path as required by the government story and we hypothetically lowered the altitude from 699 feet above sea level as provided and produced by the NTSB to the top of the VDOT antenna and continued trends that it was impossible for this aircraft to pull out of the dive at the light poles and be level across the lawn as seen in the DOD 5 frames video. After publishing the article showing that this hypothetical scenario would be impossible based on the government story and data, Lieutenant Colonel Jeff Lottis, core member of Pilots for 9-11 Truth, alerted us that the calculations were not accurate based on the premise of the original article. We started to review our article and calculations. Of course we came under harsh criticism for such a mistake. Some critics used formulas which is based on a one-dimensional problem such as a car decelerating over a distance. This formula is completely incompatible with the two-dimensional problem we are addressing. An online calculator was offered for the layman to input data so they can see for themselves how Pilots for Truth were in error. Unfortunately, the calculator reference is based on a one-dimensional problem such as the loads a car would experience during deceleration along a highway, not for an aircraft pulling out of a dive in an arc. This was pointed out several times, but it appears the critics would rather plug their ears. In other words, one-dimensional means they were using only one velocity vector, the vertical vector. We need to account for a horizontal velocity as well, the total velocity vector. With the total velocity vector, we can figure out the g-load required to pull out of this dive along the arc. A parabola formula was also offered in response to our article. This in fact makes the most sense and takes into account the two velocity vectors involved for such a problem. Unfortunately for this scenario, it wasn't consistent with the original premise of our article or the data provided by the government. Critics made the assumption that there isn't any insight into aircraft altitude, vertical speed, or attitude. This assumption is false and the NTSB has produced and provided such data based on what the NTSB claims is from the black box of American 77. Based on these initial false assumptions, the parabolic formula derived g-loading required for the least challenging scenario is 1.62 g's during the entire duration, from the top of the VDOT antenna to being level across the lawn without taking into account the linear trends provided by the NTSB. This diagram also shows the most challenging scenario of a sustained 4G pull from the FDR altitude above the VDOT antenna through to being level across the lawn. Several conclusions were made based on this parabolic response to our article which are also completely false. Based on these calculations, there is absolutely no case to be made that 1. The obstacles are inconsistent with the impact of Flight 77 2. The FDR is inconsistent with the impact of Flight 77 or 3. The FDR data is inconsistent with the impacts to the obstacles themselves. The claim was made that there is absolutely no case in which the FDR is inconsistent with these figures derived from the parabolic formula, obstacles, or the impact itself. One look at the CSV file provided by the NTSB will readily prove these conclusions false for anyone who takes the time to study the information provided by the NTSB in which the NTSB claims is based on the FDR data from American 77. The least challenging claim states that the aircraft needs 1.62 G's for a four second duration. The highest G's recorded in the flight data recorder according to the NTSB is 1.75 G's. However, this was for an eighth of a second. Averaging the G load over the four second duration using the CSV file figures as provided and produced by the NTSB, one notes 1.17 G's not 1.62 as those who make excuses for the government story would like you to believe and certainly not 4 G's as required according to the altitude plotted by the NTSB. The conclusions posed demonstrate complete deception on the part of those who would make excuses for the government story as 4 G's is nowhere to be found within the data produced by the NTSB let alone 4 second duration as being consistent with the FDR data. The other conclusions and claims implying that the flight data recorder is consistent with impact at Pentagon or obstacles 
simple analysis of the animation and CSV file altitude as produced and provided by the NTSB will readily prove such claims false. We are not sure why one would make such a claim when it is so apparent to be false if one takes a small amount of time to look at the flight data recorder data as provided by the NTSB. Calculations and figures derived by credits in response to our original article are in no way consistent with the flight data information provided by the NTSB. With that said, the parabola scenario does present a possible descent through obstacle and topography, albeit not consistent with the FDR trends. Our scene in Pandora's Black Box, Chapter 2, based on vertical speed, puts this problem into context. Based on the FDR altitude provided by the NTSB, we know the aircraft was too high to cause any of the observed damage at the Pentagon. Now we will lower the aircraft to the top of the VDOT antenna. Using the same trends, we will ask, can this aircraft pull level at pole 1 to be level across the lawn as seen in the DOD video? as intended for our original article. In order to be as accurate as possible, we built a scale model of the Arlington area, complete with obstacles, topography, scale structures, and vehicles. Scale presentation is available at the end of this video. The scale for this presentation is 1 centimeter equals 100 feet. In Pilots for 9-11 Truth Presents Volume 2, we explore the possibilities regarding pitch and bank transitioning to the south path. Placing the aircraft on the south path, lowered from the FDR altitude of 699 feet above sea level at this point in space to the top of the VDOT antenna, we can examine the pull-up needed at pole 1 and measure the radius using a three-point arc radius tool provided with this 3D animation software program. Remember, the scale of this presentation is 100 feet equals 1 centimeter box. To get an idea of how we demonstrate this with 3D software, we switch to an orthogonal view. An orthogonal view is different than a perspective view in that it eliminates the effect of distance from a viewpoint. Therefore, we can accurately determine radius of an arc and precisely draw an arc based on the pull-up needed in this view. Here is the arc drawn in the orthogonal view. We will remove the topography and obstacles in order to get a better view of the arc drawn. Again, we will demonstrate the accuracy of the scale and topography at the end of this presentation. The radius of this arc is 20.85 centimeters. But remember, the scale of this presentation is 1 centimeter equals 100 feet. So we need to multiply 100 to 20.85, and we get a radius of 2,085 feet. With the radius, we can use a simple formula required for measuring acceleration as A equals V squared over R. This is the proper formula to use for such a problem. Using the velocity as provided by the NTSB for both scenarios equals 781 feet per second. We need to square that. Divided by 2085 equals 292 feet per second squared. To figure out G load, we need to divide 292.2 by 32 feet per second squared. G-force calculation for this pull-up equals 9.14 G's. We also need to add 1 G for Earth's gravity for a total of 10.14 G's required. Transport category aircraft are limited to 2.5 positive G's, although a 757 could perhaps withstand more G-forces than 2.5 it's highly unlikely it could withstand more than five or six. Remember, this calculation is for the least challenging pull. If we hypothetically lowered the aircraft altitude from the NTSB plotted altitude to the lower height of the VDOT antenna. As we can see, G loads required to pull out of a dive from the top of the VDOT antenna are impossible for a 757. It is off the charts if we account for altitude as plotted and produced by the NTSB. Placing the aircraft at the FDR altitude, the most challenging pull, we can measure the radius of the arc needed to pull out of such a dive. Again, we switch to the orthogonal view. 
for accurate measurements and we get a radius of 576.9 feet. Plugging that radius into the same formula and adding 1g for Earth's gravity, we get 34 g's. Impossible. This is the proper way to determine g loads in a two-dimensional problem such as aircraft pulling out of a dive. Some have argued and speculated that the aircraft alleged to have struck the Pentagon was not level across the lawn as seen in the DOD 5 frames video and therefore would not require as many G's to pull out of the dive to be level. If the aircraft was in fact in some sort of residual dive and impact, there certainly would have been some type of foundation damage. Pilots for 9-11 Truth and Citizen Investigation Team have put together an article detailing the lack of foundation damage found at the Pentagon. These pictures prove that if in fact an object struck the Pentagon, it would have to be level. But as we know, it's impossible for a 757 to have negotiated the Arlington topography and obstacles based on the FDR data provided by the U.S. government.